Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 62 in our exceptional, our classic, our legendary, our epic series of Arduino tutorials. And what we're going to talk today about is dimensional analysis. And dimensional analysis is really important not just for Arduino projects, it's really important for just about any high school science class you're going to take or any college science class you're going to take. And it's also particularly appropriate for doing Arduino projects because many time, times you are handed numbers in one set of units but you need them in another set of units. And so dimensional analysis is a uh, methodology which allows you to go from any set of units to any other set of units without being confused and without going the wrong way. And so I am going to show you how that works. And I think we did this in some of the earlier lessons that we did, uh, but I want to kind of just have a separate lesson that just more formally shows you how to do this. And so dimensional analysis. Let's say, for example, that you were told that something is moving at, speaking of moving, I need to get out of your way. Let's say that you are told that something is moving at uh, 23 inches per second. And you want to know what that is in miles per hour. Okay, you want to know how what is that in miles per hour. Now there's a couple of things that you need to do. You need to start and write where you are. Okay, you know, where you are. I am here. And that is 23. And then I need to show you don't write divide with a slash. You want to write it with a horizontal line. Inches per second. And then where you are going. This is where you are going. And where you are going is in miles per hour. Okay. Couple of notes about why you use the horizontal line. Like if I have uh, A plus B over C plus D, what is confusing about that? Well, is this A plus B divided by C plus D? Or is this A plus B divided by C plus D? You've got to be very exp explicit what's in the numerator and what's in the denominator. And if you write it this way, A plus B over C plus D, that is absolutely unambiguous. Or if it was the other case, if you wrote it as A plus B over C plus D, it's very, very clear. So use a horizontal line for divide. Don't use a slash. And then even better, use parentheses to make it very clear how things are grouped together. And as a math teacher and as an engineering teacher, I can tell you you'll do much better if you use this nomenclature. All right, so back to dimensional analysis. You are at 23 inches per second and you want to go to miles per hour. Well, let's start over here on the left and then we're just going to work our way across the page. So we are going to have 23 and then put your units nice and big inches per second. Now you are going to multiply by a series of terms that take you from inches per second to miles per hour. It doesn't matter what order you go in, but you just need to always multiply by something that equals 1. Like what are things that equal 1? 12 inches equals 1 foot. So if you had 12 inches over 1 foot, it's the same thing. Or 4 quarts is 1 gallon. Or 1 gallon is 4 quarts. Now do you say 4 quarts is 1 gallon? Or do you say 1 gallon is 4 quarts? Well, it depends on what you're trying to get rid of. 
So let's look at this. We're going 23 inches per second. Now I have two problems. I don't want to be in inches. I want to be in miles. And I don't want to be in, uh, in seconds. I want to be in hours. So let's deal with the second and hour problem to begin with. Well, what do I want to get rid of? I want to get rid of seconds. And I guess I can't go to hours all at once. Well, you could, but I'm going to go in different steps. And so what I know is, what do I know? One minute is equal to 60 seconds. Okay, now you would agree that one minute is 60 seconds. So 60 seconds over one minute makes makes one, so you can multiply by it. But now you might ask yourself, why did I put the one minute in the denominator and the 60 seconds in the numerator? Because I want to get rid of seconds. So second over seconds, now I would be in inches over a minute. Am I where I need to be? No, but I am getting there. And so next up, what I want to do is I'm now in minutes, per minutes, but I don't want to be in per minutes, I want to be in per hour. So what do I do? I know that 60 minutes is one hour. Okay, now seconds over seconds make one, minutes over minutes make one. Now I am in units of per hour. Good. Am I done? No. I've got to go for the I got to take care of the fact that I'm in inches and I want to be in miles. Well, I just kind of do the same thing. What do I know? I know that 12 inches is one foot. Now, why did I put inches in the denominator? 12 inches is the same as one foot because with the inches in the denominator, inches over inches make one. I am now in feet. So now what do I do? Well, I don't want to be in feet. I want to be in miles. So I put 5,280 feet is one mile. And now feet over feet makes one. Inches over inches makes one. And now I'm in unit units of miles. And so now what do I do? I come in and I get my calculator and I multiply across all the numerators and then I have my numerator and all the denominators and I have my denominator. And so what would this be? Well 23 out here that's in the numerator so I have 23 times 60 times 60 times 1 times 1. Okay. What are my denominators? My denominators are seconds, 1, 1. I have 12 here, and I have 5280. And therefore, this is going to be, and we can put it in the calculator. Hopefully, you can see it. Uh, 23 times 60 times 60 divided by 12 divided by 5280 is equal to 1.3. Okay, so this is equal to 1.3 miles per hour. All right, now let's let's check this. That foot over foot makes one, minute over minute makes one, second over second makes one. Okay, and then mile, and then foot over foot makes one, and uh, inches over f uh, uh, inches over inches make one. Inches over inches make one. Foot over foot makes one, and we're left with miles. So we're at 1.3 miles per hour. And 23 inches per second is 1.3 miles per hour. And with this, you can go through from any set of dimensions to any other set of dimensions. Let's do one more. Okay, I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to give you some homework. And it's worth doing this homework because really, believe me, this makes my life so much easier because, you know, like that 
ultrasonic sensor it was reporting in microseconds and you know I'm more interested in miles per hour so I've got to go from microseconds or or you know something like that into miles per you know in, in into something per hour and so you really need to be able to do this and so I'm going to tell you that my car my pickup gets 18 miles per gallon and I want to know what is that in kilometers per liter. All right, how would I do that? Well, I'm in miles per gallon. I want to go to kilometers per liter. And so I start by writing down where I am, 18 miles per gallon. Okay. What two things do I have to deal with? I've got to deal with gallons to liters, and I've got to deal with miles to kilometers. And so what is it that I'm going to do first? I'm going to get rid of miles. Well, one thing that I know is that one mile, one mile is 1.61 kilometers. One mile is 1.61 kilometers. Now, why did I put the miles in the denominator? Because I want to get rid of miles, and then I'm going to be in kilometers, which is what I want to be in. Now, what do I have? I have another problem. I don't want to be in gallons. I want, don't, I want to be in liters. So what I will say is one gallon is equal to 3.78 liters. Okay. One gallon is 3.78 liters. Why did I put gallon in the numerator? Because I want to get rid of gallon down here. So I put it in the numerator. Now when I come in, look at this. Gallon over gallon makes one. And then mile over mile makes one. And I am left with kilometers per liter. So now I just need to multiply this out and I know that the answer is going to be kilometers per liter. And this is going to be 18 out here times 1 times 1.61 times 1. And then it is going to be divided by 3.78 over 3.78. So what I can say is 18 miles per gallon is equal to, and we got to do this on the calculator. While I hate calculators, this is a good use of calculator just to do plain old multiplication. 18 times 1.61 divided by 3.78. 18 times 1.61 divided by 3.78 is equal to 7.66 kilometers per liter. Okay, and this kind of makes sense because 18 miles, that's a lot further, but a gallon is a lot bigger. And so when you go to kilometers, uh, when you go to kilometers, you know, you've got that 1.6 factor, but you've got a much bigger factor that you're dividing by, which is 3.78. So a liter is a lot smaller than a gallon, and so therefore you get a number that's smaller. So that makes sense. So here is what we have done. We have converted, uh, we have converted inches per second into miles per hour, and we've converted miles per gallon into kilometers per liter. This is your homework. You can look up easy enough the speed of light in miles per hour. You can look that up on the internet. You can find the speed of light in miles per hour. What I want to know is this is the question, homework number one. What is the speed of light in furlongs 
furlongs per fortnight. Okay, speed of light in furlongs per fortnight. That's number one. Number two, gasoline today in the U.S. where I live is $2.30 per gallon. And the question is, is in Uganda, what would that be in how many shillings per liter? How many shillings per liter? So you want to go for gasoline in the U.S. at $2.30 per gallon. What is that going to be in shillings per liter? Okay. And number three, what weighs more? This is just kind of a little bit of a riddle. What weighs more? An ounce of gold. or an ounce of feathers. Okay, so you guys in the comments down below, leave your answer to these three homework problems. Okay, I want you to tell me what is the speed of light in furlongs per fortnight. I want you to tell me if gasoline is $2.30 per gallon in the United States, how much in Uganda would it be in shillings per liter? And then Uganda shillings per liter, of course. And then what weighs more, an ounce of gold or an ounce of feathers? And explain your answer. Okay, guys, this has been a little bit of a fun lesson. I will come back in lesson number 63, and I will give you the answers to these problems. Appreciate you tuning in. Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com. Think about giving us a thumbs up. Think about leaving a comment. Think about sharing this with other people. Subscribe to the channel. I will talk to you guys later.